I want to talk now, uh, transition a little bit um, to the Firebase and just the, the nuts and bolts of the Firebase, how it works. Um, the Firebase, as I said, is a physical location for Love New York. The Firebase is going to be at Justice House of Prayer, which is in the Financial District in Lower Manhattan. Um, at, in that location, we will be doing, uh, and if you guys can hand out, uh, go ahead and hand out the worship guidelines. Um, we're going to give you guys a series of handouts and kind of talk through those um, just to kind of bring you into the heart of this. Um, the Firebase starts with two hour, their two hour worship and intercession sets. Um, they are not, for those of you who are familiar with House of Prayer, Harp and Bowl style, it's not exclusively that expression. Um, Firebase sets can literally be just a church worship team that wants to just come and worship the Lord. Uh, there are others who come and uh, you know want to do more of a, a harp and bowl or a, a combination of worship and prayer. They're welcome as well. Anything is welcome as long as it's Christ-centered and uh, welcoming the Holy Spirit and wanting to see the kingdom of God released through worship and intercession. Um, so we want to talk through those uh, guidelines a little bit. Can you guys bring me one too? Everybody got one of those worship and no, prayer we're, guidelines? We're like short a lot. Oh, we're short a lot. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Lord, Lord, loaves and fishes. <laughs> loaves and fishes. Pray about Our first love. Yeah, pray about it and then just kind of tear it and see if it duplicates as you hand it to your neighbor. Yeah. Can we, can we, Marcella? Okay, let's go print one. It's good to have Marcella in the house, man. Marcella in the house. Jed's got all this memorized, so he can share his. <laughs> okay, so every two hours there'll be a worship set, and it'll continue from Halloween at 6 o'clock. Uh, PM all the way through uh, Saturday, November 7th. So a solid week of 24-7 worship and prayer. We are still looking for worship leaders, okay? So if you are a worship leader or know a worship leader, um, please get us your contact info. In fact, uh, Juanita will have uh, sign-up information in the back at the end for those who are willing to serve in that way, to lead worship teams or to be on-site intercessors. Um, there are different people who will take shifts at the Firebase. I'm not sure how long they'll be, um, but if you talk to Alyssa Holmes, she'll be our contact person. She can get you plugged into intercession sets during there. And there's some that will have a special emphasis. For example, there are several outreaches that are pointed towards Chinatown. We would love to have Chinese you know, worship lead teams during those times really contending for the nation of China. Um, so that's just, I'm, I'm going to put that out there. I know we're going to coordinate some of those details. Okay. Um, all right. So worship and prayer guidelines. Here is the deal, beloved. We come, the church is represented as part of Love New York, both the ones coming in um, as well as the ones here in the city come from very different streams of Christianity. We have mainline evangelical We've got born-again Catholics and, and Episcopalians, um, sort of mainline born-again believers, uh, and, and, and then we've got charismatic and Pentecostal churches. So we've got all the way across the board. What that means is um, we wanted to develop with the Lord a, a grid that we could all come and agree on, you know, the, a common ground, so that because some of us are used to operating in a lot of freedom and others aren't, and so... Um, particularly for those in the evangelical churches, we want to create a safe place for them to come, experience the Holy Spirit without the spirit of weird, okay? And that's what we're going for. I'm just going to come out and say it. We, we, we believe in the Word of God. We want the fullness of the Word. We want the fullness of the Spirit without the spirit of weird. Okay, are we tracking? That's our theology in like, you know, 15 seconds. Okay, awesome. So let's look at um, let's look at these worship and prayer guides real quickly. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on them. Um, in the prayer room at the firebase, we're just asking that you keep conversations to a minimum. If you have a short thing you need to say to someone, that's all right. But we're trying to create a space that's set apart for the Lord. We want to honor Him by not engaging in excessive electronic conversations or excessive conversations between believers. 
Okay, millennials, did you hear me on that one? Okay, gotcha. If you're right next to each other, don't text each other. Go out of the prayer room, connect heart to heart, okay, and then come back in. Amen? Amen. Okay, awesome. Um, two, personal volume should not exceed platform volume. We love it when people want to participate in worship and connecting, but make sure that you're not pulling the leadership of the worship set to you personally, okay? So just, you know, honor that. Again, engage with worship, but don't exceed what's happening at the platform. All right. No food is allowed. We just have water in the prayer room. Um, praying in the Spirit. Um, we believe that that gift is operating uh, corporately, and yet uh, praying in the Spirit quietly to yourself is totally all right, okay? But not just bursting out in tongues in the middle of the meeting, okay? Because we're honoring one another. Uh, yes, you have freedom to pray in the Spirit, um, but when we, we just want order to be brought to the process. So pray in the Spirit quietly to yourself. Um, you're also allowed to pray in the Spirit over someone else, but you need to ask their permission. You don't just roll up on someone and start, you know, banging, you know, the machine gun. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, let's 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 honor one another's sovereignty by just asking if they feel comfortable with you praying for them. And then when you do pray for them, we're asking that you would give an interpretation of what you're praying over them. So it's not just a bunch of noise, but there's actually something that God is releasing through uh, praying in the Spirit over the person, okay? Now, if we're praying for healing, and you go to pray for someone and ask if you can pray in the Spirit, the context of your prayer is healing, okay? That doesn't need an interpretation, because you're praying for healing. Everybody knows. But if you're praying, uh, you know, just in general for them, make sure that you're prepared to ask the Lord, and I believe He'll honor that, uh, after you've gotten permission to pray, uh, to give them an interpretation. Okay? Are we all right with that? Awesome. Questions at the end. Next, um, prophecy. We love prophecy. We believe God speaks. Um, but the Word tells us to test everything. Just because you think you heard from God doesn't mean you did. Okay? So we will have shepherds in the prayer room. If you feel like you have a prophetic word or a vision that's for corporate release, we will have elders in the prayer room. You can submit that word to them and they will help you discern whether that's a personal word for you, whether the timing to release it is now or maybe later, uh, and, and how and when that word's going to be brought forward. So we just want you to know um, when it comes to prophecy, we love it. Um, we just want to do it in order. Bring it to an elder. The same way when you're gonna when you get a pro, you believe you have a personal prophecy for someone else, okay? Um, we want to honor again people's sovereignty. We want to discern, you know, before we release things. So go to an elder, say, I feel like I've got this word for this person. Do you have a witness on this? And they'll release you, and then you can go ask the person permission, right? This is the whole sovereignty thing. And then if they give you permission, then release the word. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, hands, raising hands, go for it, clapping, awesome. Uh, just don't poke someone's eye out with a flag, a banner, a sticker, a sword, okay? So we're just cutting those out for now. We love them, they're awesome, but you know, there's people who, that's not their culture, okay? That's not their expression of worship, and they, you know, we, we want to remove every hindrance from them, Sword. yeah, swords. <laughs> oh yeah, man, people whip out all kinds of crazy stuff. Come on, you guys. <laughs> okay, um, please do not play musical instruments in the room outside of the musicians on the platform. It just gets too crazy, okay? I mean, we know that everybody's got a gift. Yeah, Jet's not gonna be allowed to play a shofar at random, unless he's part of the worship team, okay? <laughs> Um, when praying for the sick or doing any type of ministry that's initiated from the platform, again, we're just asking if, if to ask permission before you put your hands on someone. And when you do, please, on the shoulder or the head, no back rubs. Okay? No back rubs. Everybody say no back rubs. Okay, all right. We're going to just leave the back rubs out. Okay. Awesome. Shoes can be removed. Keep your socks on. No running. Uh, limited space, we're just asking that you would use your personal worship space for dancing or expressing yourself, not, you know, doing crazy laps around the room. That's awesome. I know that God does that sometimes, but yeah. Okay, awesome. Children, if older children are present, um, they need to be accompanied by their parent or guardian at all times. If they become a distraction, then we'll, go, we'll talk to the parent about 
uh, removing them. Uh, so parents, that, that's a pretty straightforward one. Electronics, we just ask that you silence your phone when you come into the prayer room. It's very distracting. I mean, the enemy will call when we enter into the presence of the Lord or have someone just bring a distraction. Um, we also want to address travail. We believe there's a legitimate form of intercession where someone just comes under a spirit of travail. We also believe, though, that the intercessor, like the prophet, has control over their own body. And so they can hold that for a, a, a while while they approach an elder and say, I have a real burden in, in travail for intercession. We'll bring you to a special prayer room where people can express travail, okay? Just so it doesn't pull us corporately out of what the Lord may be doing. Okay, awesome. All right, we are flying through this. Um, there will be on-site intercessions, again, as I mentioned. So if you know people who are intercessors that are willing to just stand before the Lord and intercede for the outreaches that are going on, that's amazing. The other thing that we're asking people to do, and, and this is important for each of you, particularly the ones that are going to be going out on the street, but if you're involved with Love New York in any way, we need massive intercession mobilized over this, okay? You'll realize how much intercession you need when you get face-to-face -face with people who are demonized and in darkness, okay? We need the power of God to come, and that means we need the Air Force, the Air Force is the intercession and the worship. Then we send out the ground troops, which are the messengers. When those two things operate together, it's a beautiful thing. But you have a personal responsibility as a messenger of the gospel uh, also to mobilize intercession over your involvement in this outreach. So we're asking each of you to ask the Lord for three to five personal intercessors who will commit to praying for you and whatever level of involvement you've got with Love New York, okay? And here's what that looks like. After you know who those three to five people are, you need to contact them, share the vision for Love New York, and there's a couple ways you can do that. There's videos on the website. You can send emails that you've received from us that kind of, you know, sort of tell the story of what Love New York is about. We've got worship and prayer guidelines, extra copies. Did anyone need some? Okay. Okay, we need one over here. We're missing a page on the ones who ran the copy, and we ran it. You didn't have a front back that was supposed to have a front back. Third. Sorry about that. Okay. Hey. Okay. We got a couple in the back. Great. Right here. Okay. Just keep your hand up. That's okay. Keep your hand up, and she'll come around. I'm going to keep going. So once you know who those three to five people are, we're asking that you would share the vision with them, that you would call them, and that you would commission them if they agree to pray for you. You would actually pray for them and commission them as an intercessor for Love New York. Now, you're not done there. Then you're going to let them know that you're going to sign them up on the website or have them sign up. I would encourage you to sign them up after you've talked with them, even with them on the phone. Uh, when you're on the website, if you click on pray, it'll open up a sign-up sheet for intercessors. You just put each of your intercessors in there. I think we're looking for their name, their phone, and their email. What will happen is, um, they will. if you sign them up in September, they'll get prayer points from Love New York. So they'll get the specific things that we're asking God to, you know, for agreement with God about um, for this outreach. When we get into October... Every week they're going to get prayer points because things are going to be heating up in October. Things are going to be accelerating in October. When we get into the outreach, which kicks off on Halloween night, how many know that's a great night for an outreach? Amen. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Every single day during Love New York, there'll be email reports going out to all of the workers, all of the intercessors with reports and testimonies from what's happening out on the streets. Going back to your intercessors, they'll get one every day, which I'm going to tell you because we've gotten reports back from the intercessors. They're like, this is amazing. I've never been able to pray and then see the immediate feedback to my intercession, and it just encourages them to, to contend even more for what God has. So um, we're asking that you would get them signed up. So when you come to Love New York, um, you're going to actually get some emails in the next couple weeks that are going to say, hey... Um, make sure you've got your intercessors signed up. Amen? Everybody tracking? Okay, awesome. The other thing that we're going to ask you to do, uh, and I'm going to have you guys go ahead and hand out uh, mobilization cards to every... That's the next thing. Um, mobilization cards. 
these are little cards. We're asking each of you guys to, again, pray about people that you can invite into this experience, whether it's a worship leader or an intercessor uh, or, or someone that will go out on the streets um, for the first time. This is a great outreach. If you've never done any outreach, this is a great place to do that because there's going to be a lot of seasoned messengers that are going to be in the mix. Okay, we'll have two, three hundred seasoned messengers on the streets uh, that you can kind of draft into this lifestyle uh, with. <clears throat> so if you actually take ten and you give ten out, we believe that the Lord's going to bring at least three of those to the outreach. Okay, three of those ten. And if that happens, this thing gets exponential real fast. So this is a key part of the mobilization strategy that God's given us. Each of you should have a stack of 10. Each of you should have a stack of 10. Okay, so if everybody's taking one, because you're trying to be New York polite, is there such a thing? (laughs) Okay, I didn't think so. Grab 10. (laughs) Grab 10. Awesome. All right, we got more. Um, Juanita, can you grab a couple others and have them help you hand stuff out? It's a lot of people for you to be doing all of it for. Can you go grab the GTM posse? Okay. One more thing. Um, How many are on Facebook? Just show of hands. How many are on Facebook? Okay. Would you open up your smartphones right now, please? It's the only time you'll ever hear me say, pull out your phone. Trust me. Okay. Pull out your smartphone, log into Facebook. <coughs> Give me an amen when you're on Facebook. Never said that before, I don't think. <laughs> Facebook church, bro. <laughs> Share the gospel with people all the time. Preach, preach to somebody on Facebook right now, bro. Let's do an outreach. <laughs> Someone's getting saved on Facebook. Okay, is everybody there on your Facebook? You got it open? Okay, type in Love New York 24-7. Love New York 24-7, it should pop up. Okay? And once it pops up, why don't you hit like? There's not a love button, because I know a lot of you would have gone for that one. Huh? Yep, Love New York 247. Did you find it, Mario? Okay, alright. His is still thinking. Anybody find it? Okay. Anybody not find it? Help your neighbor. Okay, if you see someone who needs some help, help them. Let's love each other like this. Share some social media love. All right. Here's why we're doing this, you guys. Number one, you're going to get cool testimonies and updates on that social media stream. Anybody need help in these front rows? Why is about to... Okay. We're helping. So one of the reasons is you're going to get cool testimonies and updates on Love New York through your social media feed. The other thing that happens when you like the Love New York page is when we boost our promo videos and stuff, it'll actually hit your friends and begin to invite them (coughs) into it, okay? So we'll help put some juice on the social media mobilization, okay? Anybody still struggling finding the Love New York page? Are we good? Okay. And if you want to be a real hardcore mobilizer, you can change your profile picture to the Love New York logo. You get extra bonus points for that. All right. (laughs) Okay. Um, Now I want to talk a little bit about the outreaches. The outreaches. Okay. Love New York. How are we doing, Aaron? Terry? Anybody back there who needs help? Okay. Socially media challenge. We love them all, though. We love everyone. Okay. We're going to shift off Facebook. The few that are still working on that, that's awesome. Um, Love New York is structured like this. There's a launch outreach. The launch outreach will be on Halloween. I'm going to break down for you what happens on Halloween. So starting with October 30th, for most of you, 
October 30th won't be that big a deal, but we've got all the out-of-town messengers coming into New York City on October 30th. On October 31st, which is Halloween, in the morning there will be another training. There'll be an 8 a.m. to 12 noon training at Justice House of Prayer. So when you're telling your friends, hey, you got to get to one, we'll, trust me, if they're signed up, we'll be, we'll be texting them, emailing them. I mean, we'll be, they'll know about these next two trainings. So the next training will be the 27th, uh, which is a Tuesday, I think, Tuesday, October 27th at Sanctuary Church in the Bronx. Uh, and then the last training will be at J-Hop in Lower Manhattan on October 31st from 8 a.m. to noon. From that training, they'll, the messengers will go out and do a lunch outreach. In other words, they'll pair up with someone they don't know, and they'll say, Jesus, where do you want me to go to lunch? Who do you want me to talk to? And what do you want me to say? We're going to start you know, living like this. That's the whole idea, is to turn life into mission. And when we start talking to Jesus about what he thinks, about where we should go and what we should do, the kingdom of God breaks out. In fact, if you answer those three questions, Lord, where do I go? Who do I talk to and what do I say? The kingdom of God is going to get released. That's how Jesus lived his life. Okay? So we're going to go do a lunch outreach, share the gospel with someone, share our testimony with the person that's from Los Angeles or Minneapolis or, you know, or, or you know, Jersey, that country over there. Anybody from Jersey? Oh, come on. We love Jersey. The sixth borough. We love the sixth borough. <laughs> Hey, they got, this is amazing, you guys made it to Queens. Of course, I know you guys drive our town already. The Ashkenazis are like missionaries all over the city. They're awesome. Um, <clears throat> uh, okay, so launch outreach. I want to talk about that. The launch outreach, okay, so they do launch outreach. Then from 2 to 4 on Halloween, we're going to do a, a solemn assembly at j -Hop. So it'll be two hours of just bringing your heart before God. How many know that God has an anti-hypocrisy principle? Okay? He wants us to deal with the things in our hearts before we go out and tell other people about Him. Okay? So we're going to bring our hearts before the Lord and just ask Him to search our hearts. We're going to do personal repentance, and then we're going to stand in the gap for the city and for the church just to get ourselves ready, consecrated, and set apart. Um, we are still praying about a fast a corporate fast connected to Love New York, and we'll let you know about that. It's likely that there will be a fast, and I want to just encourage you to participate in it. Um, that's right, I said the F word at church. Fasting. <laughs> I did. You heard it here. Tell your friends. These guys are crazy. But we believe Jesus said His disciples will fast. Amen. And when we fast, there's breakthrough. When we fast together for the heart of God to get released, you guys, that moves His heart. It moves His heart. So we'll let you know uh, about the fast. Then we'll do a dinner outreach. So we'll go out to dinner with somebody else. So bring a little change because Manhattan's, you know, costs a little bit, you know, to eat some. But God will provide. Don't worry. So we're going to go do dinner outreach. We'll come back. And then at 6 o'clock, we're kicking off this massive launch outreach. We're expecting four to 500 people at J-Hop. And we're, we're, we're just going to blow out the subways in Manhattan, you guys. We're going to send 50 to 100 people on the red line, the blue line, the yellow line, man. We're just going to go up and down the island, man, preaching the gospel and releasing the kingdom of God. We're going to do subway church. And I'll tell you what that's all about. In a little bit. It's exciting though. Um, I think the Lord's going to move in, a, in an incredible way. Then after that launch outreach, outreaches start every six hours for seven days straight. Okay? 28 consecutive outreaches. So you go out, you pour yourself out on the street, you come back and share glory stories of how you saw the Lord move. Uh, and then you're totally wiped out and fresh troops come in ready for the next run. Okay, And the Lord has given us targets all over New York in every single borough. The Bronx, Staten Island, uh, Jersey, uh, Manhattan, Queens, Brooklyn. We're hitting every single borough. We feel like the Lord wants to touch every single borough in the city uh, through Love New York. So uh, that's exciting. I want to give you a little overview of the basic format for the outreaches. Everybody reports to the fire base. Okay? What's that, beloved? Yes, you can hand those out. Yes. 
Everyone reports to the fire base in Manhattan, okay? Carpool, take the subway, however you need to get down there. And it's a six hour commitment. The outreaches are six hours. They start at three o'clock and nine o'clock on the hour. So 3 p.m., 9 p.m., 3 a.m., 9 a.m., 24-7. And what that does is it puts us on the street at some very strategic times. Six to eight in the morning when people are kind of moving around the city, puts us out on the street at the lunch hour from 12 to two, puts us up the street at the dinner hour again when there's a lot of activity in the city, and then it puts us out on the street between midnight and 2 a.m. How many know there's people up in New York City between midnight and two? Okay, this is a city that never sleeps. There's tons of people out in those hours. Uh, so those will be going on. We are, um, Jed is working with the local churches and outreach leaders. If you feel like you're an outreach leader, someone who could lead a team, make sure you let Jed know. Just uh, pop his hand up. Just come up and give him a shout and let him know. We're still looking for a, uh, a few outreach leaders um, for those outreaches. Then um, we'll do a final event. And the final outreach is what we're calling uh, a one-day mission trip to New York City. The final outreach, um, we're still finalizing the ven venue, but it'll be uh, a massive banquet for the lost and the least of these, uh, based on Luke 14. In Luke 14, if you guys remember, uh, a king sent out messengers, and he said, there's a banquet that's ready. Go tell everybody the banquet's ready. And of course, what he's talking about is the wedding feast of the Lamb. He's talking about when there's going to be a wedding in the kingdom of God and everyone who's in Christ is going to be married to Him forever. You guys know there's a wedding coming, right? Okay, so this banquet, um, He sends the messengers out and everybody says they're too busy. I just got a new car, I just got this, they got all these excuses why they can't come. And He says, alright, then just send out messengers and invite anyone you find, the poor, the blind, the crippled, the least of these, the ones Jesus talked about in Matthew 25, where he said there's going to be a throne room, day of the Lord, judgment, based on how we treated the least of these. The ones that our culture has thrown away, he's saying to the church, I want you to go and reach those. So the entire week, we're going to be handing out invitations to something called the King's Banquet. And then we'll go out and we'll just literally invite anyone you can find to come to this banquet. And this banquet's going to be packed. We're expecting 600 to 1,000 guests at this banquet. In Minneapolis, what we do is just rent out the Marriott Hotel, like a four-star hotel in downtown. We do a five-course white linen dinner. This is not a soup kitchen ministry. This is a lavish demonstration of the kingdom of God and God's heart for the poor. And what happens is believers are at every other seat and they just sit there for two hours and actually listen to these people. Listen to their stories and invest in their hearts by hearing, like, when you hear the brokenness and, and, and just the emptiness and the things that the, the, the people we walk by every day and don't even think about, we don't even know the trail of brokenness that's led to where they are right now. And God wants to reach them in a massive way. And the way we do that is we invest in the ministry of listening. Then people are going to get up throughout the event and they're going to share testimonies of God delivering them out of drugs, out of prostitution, out of poverty. So it's going to release faith in the room. Then uh, Brother Jed's going to get up and share his story and the gospel message. I think we're going to have the Teen Challenge Choir there. So there'll be like awesome entertainment. Uh, and then at the end, we'll call them to give their lives to the Lord. And they'll stand up, and then the people, the table hosts, the believers at the table will actually lead them to the Lord. Wow. Because there's a lot of believers that have never led anyone to Jesus. That's, you know, we, that's got to change. Amen? Amen? We need to start leading people to Jesus. Amen. And we Amen. get down and we wash their feet, beloved. John 13, we literally get down and wash their feet, and Jesus comes into the room. When you start washing the feet of the poor in this city, you will have an encounter with Jesus. So uh, just very powerful ministry. So I'm just asking that you guys would pray for us. So what we're asking you guys to do, at the end of the night tonight, we're going to have a sign-up sheet. Most of the time we're in the process of, we're just learning how to do outreaches like this. So the Lord has given us, uh, we're, we've got a software system that we're deploying and it's going to take a couple weeks for that to happen that'll do automatic scheduling with outreaches and send you text messages like four hours before your outreach just to remind you to be there and 
it's really cool and it'll be awesome, but it's not done. So we're gonna we're gonna put our names on 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 paper on the outreaches that we feel like the Lord is calling us to do. So what I'm asking you guys to prayerfully consider um, while we, you know, we're going to take a break here in 15 minutes, then we're going to come back and get real practical uh, with the teaching. What I'm asking you guys to consider is going to the launch outreach and going to the final outreach for sure. I mean, those are like serious. Those are like we want all hands on deck for those because the power of it is the mass you know, kingdom push that happens when all of us agree. Um, and so the, the launch outreach would be October 31st. The final would be November 7th. And I think those are both Saturdays. So for most of you, I hope that works or that God will give you grace to ask for time off or whatever. And then whatever other outreaches you can do, that's amazing. The other thing that being at the launch does is it really gives you a flavor for what this is. And all of a sudden your appetite to do more comes, you know, when you do it. And so we want you to like taste and see like how amazing it is uh, when God releases something like this in the middle of our city. Okay. Um, outreach guidelines. Do you guys have those sheets? And I'm, I'm going to need a copy of one of those if you can grab one for me. Anyone? Anyone? Okay. Thank you. Okay, real quick, we're going to burn through these because I'm going to, I'm going to have you guys on break by, uh, by 8 o'clock. We're going to stay on track here with the help of the Lord. Participation. This one might seem obvious, um, but it's a temptation. We've realized that, you know, for some New Yorkers, probably not you guys, but for some New Yorkers, they are challenged by crossing borough lines for some reason. It's very strange. Um, so we're saying... You know, we're asking people to be part of every single part of those outreaches. And the outreach basic format is this. You show up at the fire base. You f either find parking or you come on subway, which is even better than you don't even have to hassle parking in Lower Town, Manhattan. You go to the fire base. You're going to go into a briefing like this. It'll be a room like this. Will there be 50 to 100 of you, uh, you know, on average, in, you know, going out on the streets? The outreach leader will come and say, here's where we're going. These are the strategies that God has given us. He'll break you up into teams. We're going to be doing a tremendous amount of Subway Church. Has anybody heard of Subway Church? Yes. A couple of you. Okay, for those who haven't, this is kind of how it rolls. We divide up into groups of 10 to 12 believers, and each one will have a team leader. Typically, each of those teams will have someone that's going to do worship, that's going to lead worship. So they'll have a guitar or some kind of djembe or some kind of instrument that they're going to take with them on outreach, okay? And there'll be anywhere from five to ten of these teams going out on average, except, of course, the launch outreach. There'll be many more uh, than that. Um, you will go onto the subway line headed towards your ultimate outreach destination, and you'll pray about who to sit next to on the subway. We don't just go on there and kind of form gangs of Christians. How many know that that's not effective? <laughs> you don't roll up on people in a gang of Christians. Okay? We're salt and light. We need to be sprinkled throughout the darkness. Okay? So you're going to go into the subway car and go, Jesus, who do you want me to sit down next to? How about try that on for size? See where this is going? You start to have this constant dialogue with the Lord and your eyes get open that He's actually got assignments for us everywhere that we go. You take your seat and you just wait. All of a sudden, that guitar player will start worshiping Jesus. Now, I want to tell you something amazing about this. Because when you worship Jesus in the subway, the same thing happens as when you worship Jesus in your church. The Holy Spirit comes. And the glory of God comes. And the atmosphere starts to shift. Okay, And hearts start to open up. And darkness gets pushed back. And when God comes, it's really good for evangelism. Amen? It's really good for evangelism when Jesus shows up. Um, and, and then all of a sudden, a few other of the people on the team join into the worship. And before you know it, you got church going on in the subway. And even the sleeper cells on the subway. I'm talking about, you know who I mean? The believers that are in the closet, but they're on the subway. Start seeing church going on. They're like, yeah, that's right. This is what we're supposed to be doing. And they join in. And all of a sudden, you got... 20, 30 people worshiping the Lord on the subway, and then all of a sudden, at just the right moment, someone gets up and says, I'd like to welcome everybody to Subway Church. <laughs> it's for busy New Yorkers that don't have time to go to regular church. Amen. Amen. So 
I got good news for you. We don't have time for an offering. And we don't accept donations. But there's something in the heart of God that He wants you to know. How many know that gets the attention of New Yorkers, man? Church folk. You just tore down like two or three strongholds just with that announcement, right? And then you share the gospel and your testimony and you challenge them. If you want to know a real God who can change your life, who can break oppression off of your life, who can set you free from sickness and disease, who can come and restore your marriage. We've got people all throughout this subway that want to pray with you and introduce you to Him. And ministry breaks out all over the subway. Come on, somebody. Somebody worship Jesus. He's amazing. He's amazing. Oh, my goodness. It's so awesome. It's so awesome. Uh, so you're going to get to experience a lot of subway church, okay? And you're going to see how cool it is, how the subways, the atmosphere on the subways can totally change, man. The earbuds pop out. The, you know, the frowns sort of look up and, and hope is released and faith is released and, and salvation, healing, and deliverance. Okay. Uh, back to the general orders. The general orders. Participation. We're asking that you go to the fire base. You'll report there. You'll have a briefing. We talked about that. Then you'll go into an ammo room. Okay? You'll go to the ammo room. And we're going to hand out, why don't we hand out one of everything? Or if we don't have enough, then share. What we wanted to do is show you some samples of outreach materials that are going to be available while we're doing Love New York. There's some additional ones that are coming. Uh, I think we're going to have the Jesus film in the Russian languages as well as uh, the Chinese languages. We're also going to have a, a booklet called How to Know God Without Being Religious. And we'll have that in Chinese, God willing, and Russian as well as English and Spanish. Okay, so we'll have some basic foreign language materials. Um, we've got something. Can I see? Give me one of each of those two, man. Give me one of those and, and one of the true love. We also have um, a CD called The Real Love Project. The Real Love Project has got uh, worship, music, and very powerful testimonies of people who have encountered the love of God. And then it shares the gospel at the end, okay? So uh, this is we've seen tons of fruit from this particular resource. We also have another one called... True love, it looks like this. This is one we developed to reach the sexually broken. It's a two CD set. The first CD is uh, it's a six hour conference on the Father's love reduced to three eight minute tracks with music. So they're very, a very powerful you know, uh, teaching slash compilation uh, on track one. Then there's a 24 minute just prophetic encounter with the love of God. Uh, by a band named Worship Mob. Have you guys heard of Worship Mob? These guys are fire, man. So they donated a, a prophetic track to this project. Um, by the way, the first project, Real Love, has got Jason Upton on it, Woo! Misty Edwards. Um, it's got, who else does it? I mean, I mean, it's so anointed, you guys. It's fire. So we want you to listen to these, you guys, so that you know what you're giving to people. Now, I want to be clear about evangelism tools and what they are. Okay, so the first CD is... Uh, Father's love, and then the second CD in this set are stories of people who have encountered God's love and been brought out of sexual brokenness. Transgender testimony, people coming out of the lesbian lifestyle, homosexual lifestyle, people coming out of prostitution, pornography, it's all here. Okay, these are major strongholds in our culture. What they need is the Father's love, and then they need to know how they can step out of the lies that they've been living in. Okay, so another really powerful tool. Um, true love uh, what else um, how to know God booklet check that out um, that's the one that will be in four languages we're also going to have like I said the Jesus films we'll have a copy of Jed's book Jed just uh, finished a book uh, a powerful uh, story his own life story of coming out of prison you know crime drugs so that will be a powerful tool for street people I, I just think that will be a a great one for people to use, and uh, we'll have others. If you have tools, I think we'll have a couple for Muslim people groups as well. There's a DVD that we've got in many of the Islamic languages um, that's all about Muslims who have encountered Jesus in dreams. Amen. So it's just testimony after testimony of Muslims who have encountered people in dreams. So, um, lots of resources. Now, a quick word on evangelism tools and what they're all about. Here's what they're not. 
We are not a ministry that just throws tracks and CDs at people, okay? Not saying that God doesn't use that. We, you know, I mean, there's people who get saved at all kinds of ways. We just believe the Lord has led us to start with relationship, to build relationship, to build real heart connection, to fertilize the ground of their heart before we sow something like that in. So we want some kind of meaningful connection with the person and then we give them something so that the Holy Spirit can continue to minister to them after our encounter. Does that make sense? Yeah. Rather than getting on the subway and just doing the glory ninja. You know what I mean? And like, you know what I'm talking about? Anybody seen the glory ninja? And we're just throwing, throwing resources at people? Okay. Uh, because we don't want to walk through Manhattan and pick up $100,000 worth of evangelism materials. Amen? You know, we want to make sure they land, you know, one shot, one target. You know, we want that thing to land and that seed to get planted deep in their heart. So let's build a relationship. And I'll even often tell people when I'm with, sharing with them, hey, I've got a CD. I don't want to give it to you if you won't listen to it. But if your heart is open, I'll give it to you. And, and then I wait for them to respond. And 99% and of the time they go, no, I want to listen to it. How many know that's, that's the agreement I'm looking for in their heart before I'm going to make that investment? Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, awesome. Um, so participation, so you'll do the briefing, you'll go through the ammo room, then you'll go into the prayer room. Every outreach, you will spend 90 minutes in the prayer room, okay, worshiping, bringing your heart before the Lord, making sure there's nothing you need to do business with God about, most likely there will be, you know, just get it cleaned up, man, you have an argument with your spouse on the way to outreach, that's happened to me a million times, and, and the Lord brings it up instantly, okay, just repent, agree with Him, He's right. We're wrong. We need you, Jesus. Help me. Okay? It's that simple. So just do business with the Lord. Get filled up and then go and pour yourself out. Then we'll go. We've got basically an hour range from the fire base. So we can hit anything within an hour. We have built into our outreach an hour out, an hour up, you know, and then hitting a certain area and then an hour back on the subway back to the fire base. And it's a six-hour cycle. Okay? You come back. You debrief. When you're debriefing, we'll have our media team on location in the debriefing. They'll be highlighting people who are bringing back stories of God's glory that he's releasing on the streets. Uh, and they, will, they may approach you and say, would you come and share your testimony? We'll have a video room right there on the spot that will capture testimonies. And those will start getting popped up on social media and get sent out as part of the daily reports. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. You guys okay? Okay, because the fire hose is just like going crazy here. Okay, awesome. Um, report times. Make sure you show up at key times when you're supposed to. When we've got 50 to 100 people going out on some of these outreaches, we need people to be back where they're supposed to be when your outreach leader gives you a report time. Please honor that, okay? Jesus can save New York without you, okay? So if you're in the middle of something, wrap it up. Be back when you're supposed to be back. We're just asking that you honor those times, okay? All right, awesome. Area of operations. Stay in the area that we've identified that the Lord has given us grace and given us authority to hit, okay? If you feel like Jesus is telling you when we're, we're, when we're doing an outreach to Harlem that you're supposed to take off to Jersey City, um, check with your outreach leader first, okay? And see if they have a witness on that one, okay? Uh, and if they don't, stay in Harlem. Got it? All right, awesome. Team configuration, we talked about that. We'll go out in squad size or, or 8 to 12 uh, believers at a time with team leaders. And then within those teams, we'll have pairs of two. We do it biblically, okay? Teams of two go out. So within the t 8 to 12, there'll be teams of two. When you get to your outreach area, you'll kind of stay in the same general vicinity and work the same general vicinity together but in teams of two. Again, we're not rolling up on people as Christian gangs, right? So two, two, two by two, that's how we do it. Um, discipleship on mission, you can read that. Encounter protocol. When someone starts a conversation, this often happens with people who are just starting out in the work of evangelism. You get out there, you're excited, someone else starts a conversation with a pre-believer. We call them pre-believers because we believe they're on the on-ramp to come into the kingdom, okay? We're speaking prophetically over them. You're a pre-believer. You're on your way into the kingdom, okay? When someone starts a conversation with a pre-believer, make sure you don't ski over the top of your partner, all right? Okay, so when they're talking, don't, don't burst in with a prophetic word and run over the top of them. 
Whoever initiated the conversation is the leader of that particular encounter. And it could be either one of you. It could be either one of you. If you're a partner of someone who's fully engaged in witnessing to someone, your job is to make sure that no, you, you should be in intercession over the person primarily. That's your primary job. Because there is a battle going on for their soul right that moment. And we want to agree with heaven for that person. Okay? Oftentimes there'll be demonic distractions. Crazy people will fly out of nowhere and try it. I'm serious. And inter- you'll see the, the ones that are giggling, Lord, show them. Um, they will come flying out of nowhere and they will try and disrupt what the Holy Spirit is doing. Okay? The enemy sees in the spirit realm. He sees when there's a kingdom transaction happening. Your partner's job is to, is to deflect those distractions. So even if all you do is there's someone rolls up on them and starts engaging your partner, you roll in between them and go, hey, what's going on? And just start a conversation and draw them away from where the primary ministry is taking place. Does that make sense? Okay, we want to use wisdom in that. If you're ministering in a pair and you genuinely feel like you have something that's going to help bring breakthrough with that pre-believer, stand up here, brother. Uh, Jed, why don't you come up too? If Jed's ministering... Um, to, what's your name? Andrew. Andrew. Jed's ministering to Andrew. Flip around, you guys. Flip around. Because I'm behind Jed. I'm interceding. Jed's witnessing to Andrew. If I've got something to share... Yeah, just go through the motions. Talk, please. Okay. Kung Fu Theater. Think that. Okay. All right. So here's the deal. If Jed is ministering, and I have a word without saying anything, without interrupting, I'm just going to put my hand on Jed's shoulder and touch him. And then I'm going to step away. And what that lets Jed know is that I've got something to share. When it's when there's an opening in the Spirit, invite me in to share what I have to share. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so there's order when we're engaging the lost. Okay, you guys are awesome. Give it up for these guys. He knows Jesus. He knows Jesus. He knows Jesus. Woo! All right. <laughs> you might need to get saved again. I don't know what to do. I want to get saved every day. <laughs> Move on. Yeah, skip the Christians. No, actually, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the Christians and what we do with Christians. Christians and other Christians and real ones. Um, okay. Uh, does that make sense? Okay. All right. Tactical prayer cover. We talked about that. Demonic distractions. Conduct. You'll read that. Ministering with and to the opposite sex, you can read that. Uh, evangelism materials, we talked about that. Authority, hey, as long as your team leader is asking you to do something in alignment with the word, please honor them. That's all we're asking you to do, okay? Um, texting and phone calls during outreach. This is a big one. Millennials, raise your hands. You know who you are? Okay. I'm not going to highlight you guys. Like, well, it's too late now. I did. Um, but this goes for all of us in our culture. Outreach is not the time to be engaged with your matrix interface device, okay? Shut the thing off. The world is going to be okay. You know what I mean? Trust me, before cell phones, it was totally okay. You know what I mean? We could go without communicating with with every single person we know having access to us every single minute of the day for extended periods of time. Again, if you have an emergency like a pregnant wife or something like that, go ahead and leave it on vibrate. But just, you know, it's not the time to tech. The minute you go into your little world... You're not being sensitive to what the Father's mission is. Amen. Okay? Um, All right. Amen. That's enough on that. Um, New believers, we'll talk about that. If you do lead someone to the Lord, we want to get their contact info, and we'll talk about how that looks uh, a little bit later. Resolving issues, extreme weather, messenger bag, you guys can read all that stuff on your own. Okay. All right. We're going to take a break.